Illinois is facing a teacher shortage and a new survey shows school leaders fear it is getting worse. 88% of superintendents surveyed in the state report a teacher shortage problem, while 96% of districts surveyed believe they have a substitute teacher shortage. The survey was conducted in fall 2021 before the highly contagious Omicron COVID variant, which poses added challenges to schools as some struggle to keep buildings staffed enough to host in-person classes. Joining us now with more are Mark Klaesner, president of the Illinois Association of Regional Superintendents of Schools, which conducted the survey of school leaders, and Kathy Griffin, president of the Illinois Education Association, a union representing educators outside of the city of Chicago. Thanks to you both for joining us. Kathy Griffin, let's start with you, please. What is your reaction to the results of the survey? We're not surprised at all. Uh, we know that current that our conditions have been deteriorating. We know that there are fewer college graduates choosing a major in education. We have lower pay. Um, we we applaud the uh, legislature for passing a forty thousand dollar minimum salary in twenty nineteen, but that's not going to be applied across the state in all districts until twenty twenty three. And the pandemic has had a problem with maintaining our school staff. Um, they're exhausted. They're covering classes. I, I think that people thought that the schools were going to open in the fall and everything was going to be perfect, but that's not a reality. Um, it's difficult with our students um, because they're having difficulties with social emotional needs and we're trying to address those and um, people are covering classes and doing the best we can because we and truly it, care about our it's kids. It's obviously it's a lot of work uh, for teachers, of course. Um, Mark Klaesner, what does the survey tell you about how significant of a problem uh, the teacher and educator shortage is today? Thanks for having us, Brandis. It, we started calling this a crisis back in 17 when we started our first formal studies. So 17 and 18 and 19, we saw it as a crisis. And now I'm starting to say that crisis has become a cliff. Um, our study surveys superintendents across the state and nearly 80% of the superintendents responded. And one of the things that's most concerning is our superintendents believe 93% of them responded that they think this is going to continue for the next couple of years. The pandemic has only made it worse. Now, earlier today, we spoke with Karen Moore, a special education teacher in Harvey, about the shortage. Here's a bit of what she said. The teacher shortage has only been, is magnified with the, um, with the pandemic and having less teachers causes teachers that are here to have to cover and that's added stress because I'm doing another teachers, not a fault of the teachers, but I'm doing another uh, job. And Kathy, this is something you were touching on just a moment ago. How common is this? What we just heard Karen Moore speak about. It is common throughout the state. It is happening everywhere. Um, teachers are getting Omicron, as you mentioned, um, and they are covering their classes. They're giving up a planning period. They're giving up their lunches because we have such dedicated teachers that will do everything possible to meet the needs of our, our students. And then they go home to plan for the next day. And it is definitely calling, causing exhaustion. Earlier today, we also spoke with uh, Marge Zelensky, a school nurse in the northwest suburbs, and she said that while last semester was particularly difficult for her, she tries to encourage her colleagues to keep going. Here's what she said. You know, I mentioned to staff at staff meetings, I said, we have to outsmart this virus. We have to be, we're smarter, we're bigger than the virus. We just have to be adaptable and ride this rough tsunami rate wave that we just went through with the Omicron virus uh, uh, variants. Uh, we have to ride it through. Mark, talk a little bit about the burnout that teachers and other educators in school buildings uh, say they're experiencing. Yeah, so as I mentioned, this is the, the crisis has been going on for a long time and that results in raising class sizes. It, um, we know that our students coming out of a pandemic are bringing the effects of trauma um, in their home settings, um, coming into schools. They've dealt with loss, they've dealt with isolation. Um, there are all those kinds of social emotional issues on top of just academic learning. Um, we're asking more and more and more of teachers. And as Kathy pointed out, 
um, when you have over 2,000 unfilled positions, teachers are doing amazing things of using their plan time or their lunch hours, filling in for their colleagues, trying to do the best they can for kids. Um, and all along, we're asking more and more and more of our teachers, while at the same time, they're dealing with their families, their own personal um, challenges of the pandemic. Of course, and they're they're experiencing more. the pandemic as well. Um, and of course, exactly. Mark, you know, you've talked about mm -hmm. the, the shortage existing even before the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, the pandemic having made it worse outside of the pandemic. What are some of the factors that have led to the shortage even before COVID-19? Well, we see a number of factors. Um, one of them is, in fact, the fact that we are asking more and more and more of teachers. Every year, there's more curricular mandates. There are more requirements on our teachers. Our class sizes are going up. As Kathy pointed out, um, the teachers have notoriously been paid less uh, than, than the market equivalent. In addition, uh, we've seen teacher salaries are not raising as quickly as CPI and other factors. So some of it's about money, some of it's about demands, some of it is, is just the complexity of the job and the requirements. And at the same time, to be quite frank, our society is, is asking a lot of teachers, test scores, um, requirements for student graduations. And so we're putting more pressure and we're, we're providing less supports and we're asking an awful lot of our teachers. So, so it isn't necessarily surprising they're leaving. It, and earlier today, uh, we mentioned Karen Moore, special education teacher in Harvey. Here's a little bit more of what she said. There is a definite need for teachers of color um, in these high poverty areas where we have students of color. There's not enough teachers that look like the students. And we definitely are seeing a lack of the male presence in the teaching profession. Kathy, what can be done to recruit and retain more teachers, uh, especially teachers of color? Uh, there is one program that IEA is engaging in. It's called Educators Rising, and it is a high quality, um, high quality introduction to teacher preparation courses for high school students. And uh, we are really hoping that more high schools get engaged in this because it allows for dual credit as well as scholarship opportunities that will make choosing a career in education something attainable. And this also helps with our um, teachers of color because what we know is that 60% of teachers come back to teach within 20 miles of where they graduated high school which really justifies the need for all of our high schools to have this type of grow your own program. And Mark, you know, in about 15 seconds, what's at stake? What, is, what does it mean if we don't address this shortage? Well, I don't think it's just a, a quip saying that children are our future. And we need high quality educators in front of our students, um, providing them with the very best instruction and actually a hope to changing our future. Um, if we don't change the tide, then we, the, the outlook forward is not so great in terms yeah. of having quality people, quality teachers in front of our students. And of course, all of that means a quality education for our students. Kathy Griffin and Mark Kleisner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you Brandis.